Okay. So let's go over 19 through 24. Number 19. We want sine in terms of cotangent. Now, are sine and cotangent on the same Pythagorean identity? No, they're not. So we have to use the Pythagorean identity of cosecant squared equals cotangent squared plus one. And I want cosecant on the left side. That's why I wrote it this way. Okay. So cosecant squared equals cotangent squared plus one. So you change cosecant squared into one over sine squared. Then you have to take the reciprocal of both sides. So sine squared equals one over cotangent squared of X plus one and take the square root of each side. Now the square root of one is one. The square root of cotangent squared of X plus one is the square root of cotangent X squared plus one. And since we can't leave a square root in the denominator, we're going to bring it up to the numerator by multiplying both the top and bottom by the square root of cotangent squared of x plus 1. So your final answer should be sine of x equals plus or minus cotangent squared of x, square root of cotangent squared of x plus 1 over the cotangent of x squared, or cotangent squared of x plus 1. All right, cotangent in terms of cosecant. Cotangent in terms of secant, I mean. So the one that involves secant and something like cotangent is tangent squared of x plus one equals secant squared. So then what you have to do is subtract one from each side of this. So if I subtract one, tangent squared equals secant squared of x minus one, do the Rewrite tangent squared as 1 over cotangent squared equals secant squared of x minus 1. Do the reciprocal of each side, and then just like the last one, take the square root of 1, and then take uh, the denominator, which is the square root of secant squared x minus 1. Multiply both the numerator and denominator by that, so we get the square root off the bottom. So the cotangent of x equals positive or negative. It's square root of secant squared of x minus 1 over secant squared of x minus 1. Tangent in terms of cote cosecant. Well, I don't have tangent and cosecant together, but I have cotangent squared of x plus 1 equals cosecant squared of x. So then I move the 1 to the other side. Um, rewrite cotangent squared as 1 over tangent squared, take the reciprocal, and basically the same operations as we did in the last two problems. Okay. And then I don't need to show 22, do I? Because it's the same thing type of thing. So 23, tangent of x equals 1 half. So the first thing you find is cotangent. Cotangent is the reciprocal of it, which is 2. So then what I said is, well, I know the cotangent. Let's find the cosecant. So cosecant squared equals cotangent squared of x plus 1. Cosecant squared equals 2 squared plus 1. Cosecant squared equals square root of 5. So cosecant x equals square root of 5. I found that. And you know the reciprocal of cosecant is sine. So if sine is 1 over square root of 5, can't leave square root of 5 on the bottom, it's square root of 5 over 5. Okay. Then if I have tangent as 1 half, I can find secant squared. So 1 half squared plus 1 or 1 fourth plus 1 is square root of 5 fourths, which is the square root of 5 over 2. So secant of x equals the square root of 5 over 2. And the cosine of that is the reciprocal of that, which is 2 squared to 5 over 5. Since it's in quadrant 1, they are all positive. They are all positive. And the last one you had to do. We're in quadrant 2. Whoa. We're in quadrant 2. So since we're in quadrant 2, and we know the sine of x equals 3 fourths. 
That is positive. All right, let's remember this. All three, sine, cosine, and tangent, are all positive in quadrant one. In quadrant two, cosine and tangent are negative, sine is positive. In quadrant three, cosine and sine are negative, tangent's positive. In quadrant four, cosine's positive, sine and tangent are negative. So in quadrant one, all three of them are positive. Sine in two, tangent in three, cosine in four for being positive. Okay, if you can remember that, we're good. Okay, sine of x equals three-fourths. Whoops, meant to have the highlighter out. Undo, undo. So if the sine of x equals three-fourths, the easiest one to get is the cosecant of x equals four-thirds. Now, if the sine of x equals three-fourths, I know sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So you take three-fourths squared plus cosine squared equals one. So nine-sixteenths plus cosine squared equals one. Subtract nine-sixteenths from each side. Cosine squared equals seven-sixteenths. Cosine of x equals the square root of 7 16. So the cosine of x equals the square root of 7 over 4. So it's negative square root of 7 over 4 because cosine is negative in quadrant number 2. So if I know that, then I can find secant. Secant is 4 over square root of 7. So I'm multiplying top and bottom by square root of 7. So secant is 4 square root of 7 over 7. And then, um, really, cosecant is a fairly nice number here. So I'll use the cosecant cotangent one to find cotangent. Co, so cosecant squared equals cotangent squared of x plus one. So square it and then subtract one and then take the square root of both sides. So the cotangent of x equals the square root of seven, negative square root of seven over three. So the tangent's the reciprocal of that. Another way to find tangent is you can put sine over cosine, which is three over negative square root of seven which if you multiply top and bottom by square root of seven, you get three square root of seven, negative three square root of seven over seven. Okay. So are we good with those? All right. So moving on. Dot and even functions. Here we go. We're told on our note cards that the cosine of negative x equals the cosine of x. Why is that? Well, we know the cosine of 0 equals 1. And the cosine of pi over 2 equals 0. That comes from our unit circle. If we'd go the other way, the cosine of negative pi over 2 would also equal 0. Because remember, our cosine curve went like this. Like this. Like this this, and so on, okay? So, whether it's a positive or a negative, it's going to be the same answer here. So, if I go over a positive amount of pi, the cosine at pi is negative 1. The cosine of negative pi is also at negative 1. When everything is a mirror image around the y-axis, when everything is reflexive with the y-axis and symmetric with the y-axis, where you can just reflect over the y-axis, then it's an even function. This is called an even function when it's symmetric over the y-axis. Okay? So the cosine of a negative number is the same as the cosine of a positive number. Okay, that's what an even function is. All right. An even function is like y equals x squared or y equals x to the fourth. 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 4, and so on. Negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4. So whatever it is on the x side, it's the mirror image of that across the y-axis on the y-side whenever you have even powers. That's why it's an even function.
function. Okay. When it's an odd power, then it is a reflection, reflection. So we reflect across the y-axis, and then we're going to reflect across the x-axis. Reflect across the y-axis, then we're going to reflect across the x-axis. When you do a double reflection, the, the sine of a negative number is going to equal negative sine of x. The sine of a negative number equals negative sine of x. So the sine of 0 is 0. If you reflect it across the y-axis and the x-axis, it stays there. It does Nothing happens to it. So at pi over 2, the sine of pi over 2 is 1. The sine of negative pi over 2, the negative of that, is the opposite sign. Okay, why? Because if we reflect, and then we reflect, it's down here. Okay, reflect, reflect. So, the sign of a negative is the opposite of what it was when it was positive. Okay, so that's, if it's a negative here, it's a negative out front here when we find it. Okay, so at 3 pi over 2, the sign at 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So the sign of negative 3 pi over 2 should be what? A positive 1. Okay? Just the opposite. Just the opposite. Okay? So let's work on simplifying odd and even functions. What's the sign of negative x equal to? Negative sine of x. What's the cosine of negative x equal to? It's just the cosine of x. The negative just drops out, basically. What's the tangent of negative x? Well, this comes from your note card. Or also the fact that sine over cosine equals tangent. So a negative over positive is a negative. So the tangent of negative x is negative tangent of x. And what's the cotangent of negative x? Negative cotangent of x because it's cosine over sine and a positive over negative is a negative. Okay? So we got rid of all the negatives out of the parentheses. Now what we're left with is negative sine of x times cosine of x. And we're going to turn tangent into sine of x over cosine of x. And cotangent into cosine of x over sine of x. Any simplifying I can do? Yeah, this sign can cancel with this sign. This cosine can cancel with this cosine. So it's negative sine of x, cosine of x. That's our final answer. That's what it simplifies to. What's cosine of negative x minus cosine of x? Well, to start this problem, we have to figure out what Cosine of negative x is equal to. What is cosine of negative x equal to? Cosine of x. What's cosine of x minus cosine of x? Big fat zero. Okay. What's the sine of negative x minus the sine of x? Well, what's the sine of negative x? Negative sine of x minus the sine of x. Negative 1 sine of x minus 1 sine of x is negative 
2 sine of x. Negative 1 sine of x minus 1 sine of x is negative 2 sine of x. What would you do first here? Figure out cosine of negative x. So cosine of negative x is cosine of x, right? So it doesn't change anything. It's 1 minus cosine of x times 1 plus cosine of x. Now when we have two sets of parentheses like that, we have to think of what? The four-letter F word. Foil. You people and your dirty minds. We're talking math here. One times one is? One. Outers and inners are going to cancel. And then negative cosine times cosine is negative cosine squared of X. What's 1 minus cosine squared of x? Sine squared of x. And that's fully simplified. Let's do one more here. Well, at least one more. Maybe we'll do a couple more. How would we simplify this first step? It's the negative sine of x, right? And what's minus a negative? It's a positive. And the other one becomes 1 minus sine of x. So then we FOIL this, and we get 1 minus sine squared of x, which is cosine squared of x. Follow that? There you go, 27 through 38 all. This will not actually take, well, the first few problems will take a little while because the first few problems on the assignment, numbers 27, 28, are two of the problems where we ended with last time, where you have to figure out the five trig functions and then work through odd and even functions on 29 through 38. Yeah, um, cabinet, the upper furthest one away, second shelf. <laughs>